um, several people that were with him at that time. Uh, I talked to them very recently and they were telling me, you know, he would stand up for weaker people, right? So when the police would go and try to persecute other practitioners in the jail, he would stand in front of that practitioner. And actually, because he had this kind of physical presence, he was big, police were actually afraid of him. Mm -hmm. And so it would it would have an effect where either he would take the beating or he would stop the other person from getting persecuted. And so you can see this man that, you know, started his life as this ruffian that, you know, was using it for his own good to get paid when he didn't have to go to work to this guy that in, in prison is standing up for others. And it's a, it's a really important point that, you know, I would draw parallels to, to something I learned about growing up, uh, going to Hebrew school in the Jewish community, which is Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning. And in that book, uh, Viktor Frankl uh, went through the Holocaust. It's, a, it's an amazing book. And uh, he talks about sort of when man has meaning and kind of this faith and hope can get through any situation. Um, and it's sort of about, you know, how you're reacting to these horrible uh, conditions around you. And I, I would draw a parallel to Leo Chen Jung uh, in that environment that they could not break his kind of iron will, right? And he had this kind of faith um, about him that that was unbreakable. And, you know, there's, there's an amazing story of him um, towards his last days in, in the labor camp. At that time, Falun Gong practitioners could not actually speak to each other. So the, the guards would not let you talk. They would beat you if you talked. You couldn't could barely look at each other, right? They didn't want people communicating and kind of almost encouraging each other, right? Like, you know, they wanted to break your will. So Leo Chen Jung was on his last legs. He was in the cell. Um, and I was told a story where he saw that a young, a, a much younger practitioner's clothes were torn and he found a needle um, with a, you know, a thread. And so he picked up the practitioner's clothes, you know, on his, really his last breath, you know, he would die soon, soon after this. Leo Chen Jung would die soon after this as a result of torture in prison. And he was sewing the practitioner's clothes. And as he was sewing the practitioner's clothes, he sang a song for all the, all the practitioners there uh, about faith. And as he sang the song, you know, everyone's kind of crying because that act alone to sing a song in that environment could have meant his life. Um, and, and later would, you know, take his life, um, you know, not, not soon after.